I feel really sad for single women in 2024, and that's coming from a single woman, so I feel sorry for myself as well. So Dating in 2024 is the hardest thing I have ever, ever done in all my life. Dating apps create a terrible dynamic for men, where a small number of men get all of the invitations, and that means they can become jerks. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, we're diving into why many modern women seem to struggle with dating. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. I feel really sad for single women in 2024, and that's coming from a single woman, so I feel sorry for myself as well. So if you don't know, I feel like a broken record, but I'm 30, and me and my friend have started going to this young adults thing on Tuesday nights um, at a church, and it's been great. I love the environment. So many, so many girls that I've met there who are very similar to me, just like such sweet souls, so beautiful inside and out, and a lot of them are also single. Now, am I saying that I'm going to this church solely to find a husband? No, but obviously like that is a big part of why a lot of people go to churches and socialize in these settings. Like, in my opinion, I can have a relationship with God wherever I am, like, I don't have to be in a building to do that. But if I want to meet a husband, that's that's probably where I'm going to go to, to find somebody who has similar beliefs to me. But I just, I found myself getting kind of sad, not necessarily for me, but just like our generation, because I was looking around at all these women there who are just, you know, they take the time to look good. They're wearing their cute sundresses. They're wearing their accessories. They have like their makeup. They look so good. And they're also such well-rounded people, have so much going on in their lives, such interesting people. and. Like, none of us can find anybody. You know, for myself, I think I've always had a very strong, like, I've gone through my ups and downs, like, body image issues, various issues, but I've always had a very strong sense of self, and I feel like now in my life, you know, I waver in how dedicated I am to reading my Bible on a daily basis, but I have a very strong sense that God is always with me, and I'm always talking to him about things, and I just feel like I, I, I very much know that's where my worth comes from now, and I, I'm very, I'm very at peace with where I'm at. I've been single for a long time, and I've, I've truly made peace that if, if there's no one out there for me and that and God wants me to be alone and just have rely on him, like I've made peace with that. But it is really sad to me to watch so many women in this stage of life where we're all just hoping and praying for somebody because obviously we're not all living our lives just to find a husband. We're living our lives, you know, to live our lives and do what God wants us to do and whatever you, whatever you believe. But it's always gonna be in the back of our minds that we're always hoping for the Prince Charming to come. We're always hoping for the right person. And it is just so hard now, and I, and I, I can't put my finger on why it is. Um, I, I've been pretty lucky in my dating journey. I've really never dated anybody seriously, but everyone I have dated has always been very respectful. I've never dated anybody that was t particularly problematic. I, I think I just don't really invite that into my life. But I've never met anybody who really like there were any like sparks. And I've realized in the last few years with building this community and social media and just meeting other girls who are like me, where that is that is not unusual. It's it's very hard to find someone that you really connect with these days. Do not know why, but, and I really don't know why I'm posting this. I'm just posting this more so to just say, like if you're a girl in the situation, I, I really do feel your pain and I feel for you. Most of these modern ladies are still holding out for that perfect guy who will tick all their boxes. They have high expectations and are waiting for someone who meets every single one of them. But here's the reality. That perfect Prince Charming isn't just going to appear out of nowhere. Some of their high delusional expectations is a major reason why most of them are still single. When you set extremely high standards and wait for someone who meets every expectation, you might end up staying single for a long time. She mentioned that she's never dated anyone problematic I wouldn't be wrong to say she might be the issue. It could be that she has some things she needs to work on herself. Instead of waiting for someone who will accept her flaws without question, she might need to reflect and grow, too. The truth is most women, especially in their early 20s, believe they have all the time in the world to find the right person. But as time goes by, they start to feel the pressure. Suddenly, they're attending every social event, hoping to meet someone, there's nothing wrong with wanting to date and find love, but sometimes the struggle comes from their own expectations and actions. Dating is a two-way street. It requires effort and understanding from both sides. Instead of waiting for the perfect person, it might be more helpful to focus on becoming the best version of yourself and being open to people who don't check every box, but still bring happiness and growth into your life. So let them rethink their way of dating. It's about balance, growth, and being open to real connections rather than holding out for a flawless Prince Charming. Dating in 2024 is the hardest thing I have ever, ever done in all my life.
You know, since I've given up alcohol and I'm not going out and session and doing one night stands, I actually want to find someone that I want to do life with. I know, crazy, right? But I'm sure the dating scene and these apps are there to keep people on them. Like, I don't think you're meant to find someone that you actually want to be with. So yeah, it's a fucking struggle, like an absolute struggle. Nobody wants to settle down. Everybody is so easily replaced and nobody wants to fight for anything. Am I the only one in fucking Wales who feels like this right now? Hmm? If I'm not, fucking tell me because I'm sure I am the only one. I think I've gone old school. And my teeth are not this white. There's definitely a fucking filter on it that I can't get rid of. She spent her 20s dating Chad and Tyrone, enjoying every moment and turning down every good guy that might come her way. But now that the wall approaches and she thinks about settling down, she now seeks us she once turned away. She had her fun when she was in her prime, but now we are in our prime and have moved on with ladies who recognized our worth and value early on. Her struggle isn't caused by anyone else. It's a result of her own choices. When she was younger, she might have overlooked these good guys, thinking there was always time to find the right one later. But as the years passed, the pool of available, genuinely good men shrank. This situation highlights the importance of valuing people for who they are and not just what they offer in the moment. Decisions made in your 20s can impact your future, especially in dating. While it's great to enjoy life, don't overlook us the good guys who might be perfect for you in the long run. Your choices today can shape your tomorrow, so think about what you really want and make decisions that lead to a happy and fulfilling future. Dating apps create a terrible dynamic for men where a small number of men get all of the invitations and that means they can become jerks. They can be rude, they can date multiple women, and then the women feel men are jerks. But you've got all, you've got most of the men are getting no bites, they're getting no dates, and they feel women are jerks. All they want is, you know, X, Y, and Z. So I think the dating apps are one of the reasons driving the sexes apart. Again, this is just for heterosexual dating. Um, just driving the sexes apart, making it more difficult to date, to court, to fall in love, to marry, to have children. So I think we're going to look back on this and say the dating apps had all these unintended consequences that are really messing up the romantic lives of Gen Z. Don't forget the millennials, my guy. My friend sent me this video yesterday and I was like, oh my God, mind blown. Oh, so curious what everyone thinks after watching that. I can give you the female perspective, the female perspective being representative of only myself, okay? I think what he's saying is true. I think that us females go for a lot of the same guys on apps, which I think stems from the fact that people overall are burnt out by dating apps and the fact that they don't work that well. But to get us to the point of actually pulling the trigger and going on a date with someone, you have to be tall, hot, have a good job, interesting. Like you have to be legitimately perfect. Except that's not how relationships and compatibility actually work in the real world. My apps are deleted, but when I had them, I'm sure there are people that I passed up on there that would actually be someone I'd have a good connection with. But since they weren't perfect on an app, I would never potentially waste a night on that person that I could have been spending with my friends that I know I like, and I'm guaranteed going to have a good night. To me, the dating app itself doesn't disrupt the dating system. It simply connects individuals. The real issues come from the choices people make. Whether someone decides to double date or cheat isn't the app's fault, it's their personal decision. When it comes to women using these apps, many are searching for an already perfect man. They often pursue Chad, who seem to meet their high expectations. This pursuit can be problematic, you know. By focusing on finding someone who fits an idealized image, they may overlook genuine connections with others who don't meet every criterion, but could offer meaningful relationships. This tendency to chase after perfection leads to ongoing struggles. Women may find themselves repeatedly disappointed when their high expectations aren't met. Instead of seeking perfection, it might be more beneficial to look for compatibility, shared values, and genuine connection. Do you know what the problem is with dating over 35 is that everybody carries around emotional baggage, right? So they're either traumatised from a previous relationship but go into another relationship because they're seeking that love, that validation, right? But they're so insecure or they start acting psychotic and that causes like emotional, like, whatever in the relationship. It doesn't work. 
there's trust issues, um, stuff like that. Or the opposite happens where they've been impacted by a previous relationship. They get so guarded that they won't take a leap of faith on the relationship. So they just don't have one, they don't commit. It's like, what chance have we got? <laughs> this is another point to consider. Dating women in their 30s. It can present challenges. You know, after dating various types of guys, they've gained a lot of experience, which often leads to increased expectations for any future partner. As a result, the number of boxes that need to be ticked grows, making it harder for us to meet all their criteria. Alongside these rising expectations, insecurities can also increase. They might be more cautious, analyzing potential partners more critically, and this can complicate the dating process. The quest for a perfect match becomes more difficult because their experiences have shaped a more detailed and demanding list of qualities they're looking for. This combination of high expectations and insecurities can make it tough to find a suitable partner. It's not that there aren't great matches out there, but the process of evaluating and accepting someone becomes more complex. Their past experiences might make them more selective, and they may have less patience for imperfections. I just went on a date. Yes, I know, I thought we were done. I thought, I thought we were done doing this, but I went. I went because I was just curious. Am I throwing in the towel too soon? I just went on a whole ass date. I zoned out, I don't remember it. We went for this whole walk for like an hour. I don't remember what we talked about or if I drooled the whole time. I zoned out, I don't remember any of it. <gasps> I think I am just completely checked out. Like how, 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 how do I date? How do I date? How do I date with this personality and uh, the introvertedness and the extrovertedness and the, I'm a fucking confusing shit show of do I want to be around people or do I want everyone to go away forever? I know that's rude, but really maybe everyone could just disappear for a little while. <sighs> I don't remember the whole thing. I don't know what we talked about. Who were they? I don't know. Oh my gosh, it's gone, it's gone. I just came to and was like hugging a stranger and I was like, oh shit, how did we get to this point? Did I like you? I, I, oh my gosh, I zoned out an entire person. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. She might claim that the dating market is bad, but she has some personal fixes to do. It's challenging to connect with someone if she's mentally checked out during conversations. Being fully present is crucial for building a meaningful relationship. These same women often create videos asking, where did all the good men go? The reality is that we are still around, but we are overlooked. To find and attract the right partner, it's essential to be genuinely interested and actively participate in conversations. Blaming the dating market won't help if personal habits and attitudes are contributing to the struggle. By addressing these issues, she can improve her chances of finding a compatible partner. On Reddit, someone shared his dating experience, which he titled 2024, Dating is Trash Already. I would like to get your own experience in the comments. His own reads, dating for 2024 straight into the shitter already. Met a nice girl on Tinder, messaged her, connected on a lot of things, music, love of tattoos, traveling, food. Went to her place a couple of days ago to watch movies. Yeah, I mentioned to her I wasn't expecting segs like most men would because I wanted to get to know her first and take her on a proper date and be romantic. Messaged her Friday morning of said date, what time did you want me to pick you up? Even bought flowers to surprise her because I knew she liked roses. Then she said she had work, which I understood. Asked again Saturday what she was doing, knowing she had Saturday off mind you and if we could get coffee or something. She then followed up with, sorry, got plans. Messaged her, okay, LMK, when a good time suits you to get together. She ghosted after that and have not heard from her. It's been three, four days, maybe more, just over this generation. Don't want to sound corny, but guess it's true nice guys finish last. This will be all for today. What do you think about this video? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to get notified whenever we post a new video.